Uh, a report from your, your committee says that China is a threat to world security that can't be ignored. It's trying to silence criticism of its human rights abuses and impo impose thought beyond its own borders. So would you rather that the Foreign Secretary was not going? No, absolutely not. So the position I take is it is really important that the Chinese Communist Party is crystal clear that we will not stand for transnational oppression, nor this drift towards authoritarianism. It's more important that James Cleverly is in the room vociferously disagreeing with them so that they know our position, rather than it being them relying on seeing what his tweets or his media interviews to understand his position. The choice is not between absolutely no contact and naively trusting. There is a middle ground where we make very clear our position. You, you, your report also talks about concerns about a void in the government's China policy here in the UK. What do you mean by that? Absolutely. So there is a China strategy that the government has, but it's at the highest possible security level. That means that some government ministers have not even seen it. So I question how you can have a comprehensive cross-government strategy when ministers themselves don't know what they're working towards. And the real here is that there's there big uncertainty, whether it be for businesses, academics or ministers, which leave them unsure of the boundaries between caution and collaboration. Now, the Chinese Communist Party are very explicit on what they're seeking to achieve, and they are therefore exploiting uh, this uncertainty, which is why we have to end it with the publication of an unclassified China strategy. And, and in terms of what Mr Cleverly is achieving there, you said, you know, it's important that he is in the room and that he voices your concerns vociferously. Do you have any confidence at all, though, that the Chinese will listen to his concerns? Well, look, we've already seen in the last few months, the Chinese Communist Party is slightly starting to realise that perhaps their wolf warrior diplomacy is not helping them. It is not helping them achieve what they want. I spoke to James Cleverly yesterday while he was on the plane. Um, I'm very hopeful that he will land those points about transnational repression. We all know we are seeing increased espionage on British shores. And we are also seeing appalling human rights abuses against the Uyghur, the Tibetans and many more. It is absolutely important that Britain has a role to play in the Indo-Pacific, where we make clear that we will stand up for rule of law, for human rights and for self-determination. And that actually our willingness to do that is not a threat to China. It is about us standing up for the international rules-based system and those norms and values which mean that no, Sovereignty cannot be achieved through violence. And it is vital that China hears that again and again from partner after partner. So should Rishi Sunak choose to, to meet President Xi if the opportunity arises soon? Again, absolutely. It's really important. This is how you prevent and deconflict potential issues. We need to have leader to leader discussions because that is where you can stand resolute. That is where Xi Jinping knows that we are absolutely clear. Which, of course, on China is a part of. Uh, invited new members to join, you know, countries like mm. Saudi. Russia was speaking there. It was Lavrov, it wasn't Putin himself. But in terms of BRICS and its expansion, do you think there should be more cooperation between BRICS and, for example, the G7? No, I, I don't. And I'm really not convinced that BRICS is going to achieve what it wants. This new expansion, for me, is actually a sign of weakness. It's a sign that they are desperate to sign more people up. But actually, what was really interesting was on the day, Indonesia chose not to join. And those countries who did join, some of these countries have long-standing enmities. Others are completely reliant on the IMF for their funds. Others require bailing out very, very regularly. This is not a strong economic structure, and it is not a competitor for the G7 as much as the Chinese government wants to suggest that it is. But I think that a lot of those countries who are involved in BRICS would argue with you here, and they, they would say you know, that they are a strong economic force when they are, are together. And, and I suppose my, my point would be, they are at least engaging with Russia. And, and, you know, if you say it's important that the UK engages with China and gets in the room and talks with them, mm -hmm. what's the difference between us doing that and them talking to Putin? The difference is that China has not currently invaded a sovereign country and decided to commit war crimes on a daily basis. It has also not committed atrocities on British soil where it has murdered people, whether it be the Skripals or Litvienko. There is a big difference between China and Russia. And we have to make sure that where we can, we mitigate the worst excesses of the Chinese Communist Party's ambitions. Defence is not an escalation. This is what James Cleverly has to be absolutely crystal clear on in all his discussions 
we need to end this two decade long failure of deterrence diplomacy. We need to show that defense is not an escalation and make clear to China that us standing up for our values and us protecting our country for where they may seek to make us dependent on them or more vulnerable is not a threat to them. How much further could the UK go, though, to press China in terms of its relationship with Russia? I mean, the threat of sanctions, for example, for the, over their continuing support for Russia. I mean, do you think that is something that we should embark upon? So it's about understanding how the Chinese Communist Party currently feels about what's taking place in Ukraine. And the reality is that I think when this all launched, the Chinese Communist Party thought it might be a, a helpful distraction. They might be able to watch it. That might be able to gauge international response and monitor it. But increasingly, it is becoming a headache for the Chinese Communist Party, one that Xi Jinping does not leave uh, need. So for me, it is all about always thinking about what the other part of the other country, how they are thinking, how they are seeing things and pressuring them. But I do think we see across the world, not least because China wants to present itself as a new diplomatic arbiter around the world, that the Chinese government is more interested in ending what's taking place in Ukraine and Russia. But of course, we can't end it at any cost. It has to be the right outcome and the right ending. Alicia Kearns, Chair of the Foreign Affairs Select Committee, thank you very much.